the all new Sigma 18 to 50 mm f2.8 is here. This is Sigma's first ever zoom lens for Sony a6000 series cameras and it is also the lightest and smallest in its class. With its large f2.8 aperture, superb image quality, exceptionally fast and quiet autofocus and crazy macro capabilities, the most important question is, is this the only lens you will ever need? All-in-one ultimate lens that is as good for photos as it is for videos? And what about the competitors? All of those questions are answered, my friends, so let's get into it. So in this video, I want to focus more on the aspects of who this lens is for and who is it not for, what is the intended use of this lens, what are its downsides, and if there are any better options from its competitors. Just a note here, Sigma did send me this lens for testing purposes, but I don't get to keep it and as always, I'm free to say whatever I want about it. And instead of showing you boring focus charts, you'll be able to judge the picture quality by ton of pictures and video examples I'm gonna share throughout the video. The first thing you will notice when taking this lens in hands is its size, weight and the use of materials. If you know anything about lenses, you will know that getting a constant f2.8 aperture in a zoom lens is not only difficult but also expensive because you need a lot of space. But this lens is so tiny and compact that you can't believe it's f2.8. It is not wider than the lens cap itself and on a small camera like Sony a6000 it just feels so right. Sigma has used carefully selected materials to make the lens lighter and sturdier. And the overall build quality is phenomenal and I'm pretty confident this lens can take up on itself a heavy use. I think Sigma is quite confident with it too and that's why they are offering a 5 year warranty. The touch of lens is extremely pleasing, it feels kind of matte and the, and the big zoom ring feels premium as well. What threw me off though was that the focus ring is here but the zoom ring is here. And if you know that Sony lenses have it other way around, so several times I, I wonder why am I not zooming in while spinning around just the focus ring. So overall build quality, weight and size is mind blowing. This lens is extremely versatile and through several picture examples I want to show what you can do. First, you can easily use it for landscapes. 18mm on wide end is enough to capture grand vistas. Zoomed all the way in, you'll have plenty of reach. However, this is not a telephoto zoom lens, so don't expect to do much of wildlife photography. This lens is perfect for traveling and just everyday use. You can do architecture shots, city, street, photography and just capture all the small moments that are happening all around us. With the f2.8, it doesn't really seem that you need a prime lens, because bokeh is beautiful if you're close to the subject, even when shooting at the widest, 18mm. When zoomed in all the way to 50mm, the background blurs so much that it feels like the picture is taken with the prime lens. Of course you can use this lens also for portraits, and again, background gets blurred enough for the subject to stand out. I took a couple of shots with this lens and I was really pleased with the results even for the portraits. You can shoot products, cars and any other object with this lens, but the coolest thing about it is the macro capabilities. I was really shocked of how close I can get to the subject. Just look at this, the object is almost touching the lens, so you can really get close and the sharpness at such close distance even when zoomed in to 100% is crazy. Obviously, this is not a true macro lens and also ph photographing a, a bee or other living object, this lens won't be the best because of how close you actually need to get. Sigma is known for its sharpness and for not cutting corners when it comes to image quality. Reading on their website, I found out they have tried to keep the number of glass elements to the minimum, which gives superb optical quality while reducing weight. 
They've also used in-camera aberration correction, which helps to eliminate optical imperfections such as distortion and vignetting. And remember, all of their lenses are made in Japan, where they use the latest optical design technology to produce high-quality stuff. Sigma uses the stepping motor, which gives a really fast autofocus both in pictures and videos. I set the autofocus tracking to responsive and autofocus speeds to fast to show you how fast it actually is. It also nicely sticks to the subject and keep the track if I move the camera closer or further. And not only it is fast and reliable, it is also dead silent. You simply cannot hear it, which is perfect if you want to shoot videos. But it's not all perfect with this lens, and I think one of the biggest drawbacks is that it does not have OSS or optical study stabilization. The regular Sony kit lenses has OSS, and I know a lot of people will be disappointed with this, as I was too. But listening to Keynote from Sigma, they actually address this question, and the reason why it doesn't have OSS is because you don't really need it. Well, the thing is that the aperture of 2.8 is fast enough for you to keep your shutter speed fast. Besides, by not including the OSS, they manage to keep the size and weight of the lens to the minimum. But if you are a video shooter, well, then I think you are in trouble as OSS is always welcome. In videos, of course, this lens is better than the kit lens since it's way sharper and also has better and most importantly constant aperture, which is highly valued in the video maker's world, but faster aperture won't fix shaky footage. Then you have to use a gimbal or shoot at 60 or 120 frames per second. So from my side, lack of OSS is the only downside this lens have, and if I would shoot only photos, I would not care at all, but if you also shoot videos, then this is something to consider. And lastly, should you buy this lens or choose any of the other competitor lenses? Besides the Sigma 18 to 50mm f2.8, I have also identified four other lenses. And with the Sigma, the price is $549, and the, uh, the plus size is that it has the compact size, bright aperture, and superior quality. But the downside is that it doesn't have the optical study stabilization and it doesn't actually have the best range compared to other lenses here on this list as well. Next up we have the Sony 16 to 50 mm kit lens. Well, it is $298 and very often it comes just with the, with the camera. It's tiny, cheap and has optical steady stabilization, that's on the plus side, but the, but the negative sides are that it's poor quality, both the build quality and the picture quality, and not good aperture, meaning it has only f5.6 when it comes down to zoomed in. I mean, this is a good beginner's lens, but it's not perfect if you wanna take your photography to the next level. Next up, we have the Sony 18 to 105 f4 G lens. And as I said, this is perfect for videographers. For photography, you have a very good range, you have a constant aperture. And as I said before, it has optical study stabilization and it's very versatile lens. However, it is big and heavy and the, and the aperture is only f4. So I would say this is not ideal for photographers. Then the fourth lens in this list is the Sony 16 to 55 f2.8 G lens. This is basically a copy of the Sigma's lens, but of a price tag that is double, $1,298. Of course it does have superior quality and I would argue it is as sharp as Sigma lens and it has a, a, exactly the same aperture of 2.8. But on the negative side is extremely expensive, it also doesn't have the OSS, so I personally don't see a reason why you would choose this lens because it's also much bigger and heavier than the Sigma lens. And lastly, the last, and I think this is a very serious competitor, is the Tamron 17 to 70 f2.8. This lens is, is one of the greatest range besides the Sony 18 to 105. Uh, it has a bright aperture of f2.8 just like Sigma has and it has a VC or the Sony shooters would know that as an optical steady stabilization and this is a very versatile lens. The downside is that it's big and heavy and also the price tag is a higher than the Sigma lens coming at $799 versus $549 for Sigma. 
So all in all, by no means, this Sigma 18 to 50 mm f2.8 is a perfect lens and a clear winner. It is not the best in the range, doesn't have OSS, however, as said before, this lens is not for everyone. This is a perfect lens for those who want high quality premium zoom lens with fast aperture, sharp images and most importantly ridiculously compact size at a very decent price. This lens is for those who want to take their photography to the next level without buying three different lenses and without breaking the bank, as well as the pocket. Tom Surex is always here with you my friends and let's see each other soon in another video. Oh and don't forget to keep on creating. Ata!